the gentleman yields. Uh, I now recognize uh, the gentleman from Oklahoma, Mr. Burkeen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Sheriff, I, you had mentioned something. This was not be something that's part of the record of this hearing, but I had a chance to introduce myself to you. I liked your five-inch brim and your good leather work on your belt. <laughs> Thank and you, uh, we had a conversation before this hearing started yes, where you had mentioned to me in 2005, uh, circa, yes, that there was a policy that uh, you paid attention to, uh, detention, consequences. I'd like for you to elaborate on what you shared with me in private to this committee. Okay. Uh, back in 2005, I was with the U.S. Border Patrol. We started a program that was called Operation Streamline. <clears throat> we started in one little s s part of Del Rio sector and expanded it as it went on. But every illegal alien caught, everybody, m male or female, was prosecuted for 8 U.S.C. 1325, which is illegal entry into the United States. It worked. We had areas in Eagle Pass, Texas, that were seeing groups you know, on apprehension on a daily basis anywhere between 50 and 150. Once we started that prosecution, they went someplace else. Once they moved, we moved with them. And after about a year, year and a half, our apprehensions went through the floor. Where we were, app we were apprehending 150, 200 a day in Brackettville, it went down to 10 or 12 a day. And those were usually they were being transported in smuggling cases, but they too were prosecuted for illegal entry. And then we expanded that into uh, expedited removal. In other words, right there on the spot, we did the paperwork, they were removed back to Mexico, and it was considered a deportation. So if they ever entered again, they were facing felony charges. That program worked. And can you elaborate on, there was jail time involved in this, correct, yes. as a deterrent? Uh, up to 180 days in jail for the illegal entry, which is a misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. And if they were caught again for reentry after deport, I believe it's two years or five years? Five years. Five years. They faced up to five years for reentry re after deport. That's great. Um, what do you experience now? Uh, can you elaborate on if you show up on the scene and uh, your your county is not the first to apprehend them? If the border patrol is there, what happens in terms of your ability to um, start uh, trespass proceedings against this person? If we if we show up on scene and the landowner wants the ones that are caught on his property processed and prosecuted for criminal trespass, but border patrol got their hands on them first, they will not give them back to us. It's not because the agents in the field don't want to. It's not because the patrol agent in charge doesn't want to. It's coming from Washington. And, and, uh, and there's so many years of experience here in front of us at this table of, of dealing with this. Um, President Biden has made the comment, not one more foot um, in regards to, you know, the, the, uh, building a fence or a wall. Um, Director, uh, what can you tell me? We. We saw, I think it was either under DPS or National Guard in the El Paso sector, rent a fence that the Texas Department um, well, there's, uh, uh, was actually where the federal government had stopped the construction. I, I took a picture with it. It says mm -hmm. rent a fence. Mm -hmm. so can you talk to me about Texas's position on physical barriers? They're an absolute necessity. And uh, as Congressman Luttrell indicated, sometimes you don't need it. Big Ben's a pretty good infrastructure itself if you've got technology employed, but clearly El Paso, when you saw, when you have Venezuelan swelling in the, along the, uh, uh, the, the Del Norte Bridge in trying to push in, if you don't have the infrastructure, and certainly on some of the areas where, where Texas Military Department has put concertina wire and other infrastructure, then you're going to get people able to move in such, in such quantities that you can't stop it. So infrastructure plays a key role uh, and I think that whether it's uh, permanent infrastructure or even temporary infrastructure where we had to use something because we don't have time to, to build the type of fence that needs to be there, it's important. And uh, Mr. Carrera, you represent 16,000 Border Patrol agents out of almost 20,000. And uh, what is the, what is the, the, the guys and gals that you work with, what's their position on physical barriers? We have people across the nation post-86 amnesty who would, you know, who would talk about that there's no value in physical barriers. What's, what are the people that you work with and your years of experience, what does it tell you on the value of physical barriers you know, to solve this problem? They work. I mean, it, it works 100%. You know, you, you may come over that wall if you climb over that wall, the chances are that our agents are going to be there to, to meet you on the other side. It, in, in Hidalgo, if there was no wall there from the time you left the river to the time you disappear into the community is less than 30 seconds. But with that wall up, that gives us 
a good three, four, five minutes for you to get over and get down, and our agents are there. So without that wall, it doesn't stop everything, but it gives us enough time to get in position. And I mean, there's one around the White House. Uh, there's a reason that uh, that's there because it works. So in terms of allocation of resources, you believe that one agent has the ability with the fence, a fencing structure, has the ability then to be able to cover much more ground, whether they're horseback, ATV, uh, that that gives that agent greater distance and more efficiency in their day-to-day -day work yeah, activities? Yeah, it, it is a force multiplier. It does slow them down so that our agents can get there and, and get the job done. So it is, it's not the only tool in the toolbox, but it is a very necessary tool. Thank you. I yield. Gentlemen, yields. Uh, it would appear that I uh, skipped one of our members. Uh, my apologies. My deepest apologies to the gentlelady from Florida. Uh, you are now recognized, Ms. Lee.